mystery was revealed. Uh, and I would say it was only a mystery because man began thinking carnally. You know, when, when, I, when I went back and studied a, a lot of the Talmud and read a lot of that, there was a certain section of rabbis and teachers that believed that when man ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they lost the ability to actually understand the language of God. That they, they, it was almost like there was a language barrier now. You know, like uh, if I went to China, I can't speak Chinese, and so I can't understand anything that they say. But I might guess based on sure. what I see. Right. And so uh, that's what a lot of uh, the commentary the, in the Talmud, the rabbis would say, that man lost the ability to understand the language of God. And so we took, partook of a carnal way of thinking, and then we began judging everything that way. And so the truth was always there, but we couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus came to make the truth abundantly obvious, which is one of the truths is he came to reveal the truth about the Father. Well, we all think the Father was angry with us because of our sin. Right. Jesus comes to destroy that. He comes to destroy the idea that God was angry with man because of their sin. And John talks about this in chapter 1. He says, no man has seen the Father but Jesus. He has come forth from his heart. He has come to translate the Father for us. Because we can't see that guy clearly. Right. But there's a whole Old Testament talking about God. Jesus says, no man has seen the Father. Or John says, no man has seen the Father. But Jesus. He has come to bring him out where we could see him for who and what he actually is. He has come to interpret him for us because we're thinking with the carnal mind not with the spiritual mind and so we can't see that God for who and what he actually is and so someone needs to come and bring it out where we can see it and that's kind of what it says in Hebrews uh, chapter 1 it says in, in the old times or in days past God who spoke to us by the prophets and by the fathers mm -hmm. has now come and spoken to us by his son and given us a more sure word of prophecy. A more sure word of prophecy. So that we could understand it for what it actually was. That's why any interpretation you have of the Old Testament that doesn't jive with what was revealed in Jesus, it's an error. It's erroneous. Those two things are not opposed to each other. It's not that there was one way, and now there's some different way. It's, there's always been one way. Man couldn't yeah. see it. We were blind to it. And Jesus came to remove the veil from our hearts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Our hearts were veiled to the truth. And even in grace, that was why I preached this message. Even in grace, my heart was veiled to the truth. I thought Jesus approached God through Mount Sinai. Hmm. I thought Jesus did like Cain. I thought Jesus gathered up all the good fruit that he manifested. He had it all in a big ball. And then he came to the heavenly tabernacle in front of God and said, Look, I loved everybody perfectly. Look, I was always kind. Look, I always rested. Look, I always did this. I always did that. I performed all the works of the law. I never touched a leper. I never touched somebody that wasn't unclean. I never did. That's not what Jesus, it says Jesus appeared in the heavenly tabernacle with. It says he appeared with his blood. And I preached about this the week before. Right. But yeah. when you study the sacrifice from a Jewish perspective, they didn't think that every form of sacrifice was to atone for sin. Mm -hmm. Some sacrifice was a bringing together of the earthly and the divine realm. So when Jesus appeared with his blood, he didn't appear in the heavenly tabernacle with the fact that he loved everybody. Did he? No. What would Cain have appeared with? The fruit. Look at all the good fruit I have. Can I be exalted now, Daddy? Leviticus says the life of the flesh is in the blood. Jesus did not trust in the flesh for life, so much so that his blood was shed and he died. What does he do when he's raised from the dead? He appears in the heavenly tabernacle with his blood on behalf of mankind, declaring to the Father, not by my strength, O God, but by your strength will I be exalted to the right hand. That's what the blood signified, just like Abel. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So Jesus didn't approach from Mount Sinai. He didn't take all of his good fruit and then appear in the heavenly tabernacle with his good fruit. He appeared with his blood. He approached from Mount Zion. He approached declaring his trust in the grace of God. 
And that's why he was exalted. And that's why he was sat at the right hand. Now, did you hear everything I just said? Now, my eyes began to be open to these things when the veil was removed from my heart concerning the law of God. And I saw that the law of God was made flesh in Jesus. And as the veil was removed from my heart, I began to then understand what it is Jesus actually did. I began to understand that it wasn't by the works of his hands that he was exalted. I began to understand that it wasn't because he loved that he was raised from the dead. He wasn't raised from the dead because he loved. He was raised from the dead because he believed in the Father's promise to raise him from the dead. So much so that he said, I don't have to preserve my own life. So let me hang here on the cross till I die because that guy is going to preserve my life. That's why he was raised from the dead. Jesus could have loved everyone perfectly right up to the cross. And if he would have tried to close himself, he wouldn't have been exalted. Man wouldn't have been exalted. See, we get it all twisted. We describe, G we describe, we take what Jesus did and we use the way of Cain to explain what Jesus did. Through man's sin. The filter is always through man's sin. We don't realize the fruit of his life was born from his heart being stung by the word of an eternal, immortal life that was promised to him by the Father. His heart was stung by a word that said, I will not suffer you to see corruption. I will not leave you in the grave, but I will conquer the death that manifests in your body, and I will clothe upon you with glory and immortality. That promise dwelled in his heart. Because he didn't think he had to preserve his life, what do you think he did when somebody smacked him across one side of the cheek? He turned and gave him the other one. Do you see how being stung with life brought forth fruit? Mm -hmm. The Bible says that the cross was the demonstration of God's love for people. So because Jesus didn't think he had to preserve his own life, he hung on the cross dying. That manifested the love of God. But it wasn't the love that manifested his belief. It was his belief that manifested the love. <laughs> so he wasn't raised by the fruit that came forth from his belief. He was raised by the belief that produced the fruit. Yes. Otherwise, he would have appeared in the heavenly tabernacle with all the fruit, right. just like Cain. He would have said, look, Daddy, I loved everyone. I was kind to everyone. I was perfect. Why did Jesus 